hi thank you for tuning into simtech channel in this video i'm going to show you four simple ways or methods to generate a pwm signal using an arduino uno board as you can see here i've got an arduino board with a rather interesting add-on here and i'm currently generating a 490 hertz frequency with a duty cycle of 42 percent now, this is just a one way to generate a PWM signal that I've got loaded in here. If you stick around, you're going to learn four simple ways to generate a PWM signal with an Arduino Uno powered by the Atmega 328 microcontrollers. Now, before we can dive in, let's make sure that we are all on the same page. If you are here, it basically means you already know what is a PWM signal and its importance in power electronics, controllers, gate drivers, and obviously embedded systems application. But to make sure that we all understand the signal that we are currently viewing, let's just recap quickly on what exactly is a PWM signal. Now, PWM pulse width modulation. As you can see here, I've got three PWM signal here with three different pulses, okay? So the pulses are the duty cycle. Here I've got a 20% pulse, and here I've got a 50% and a 80% pulse. Now, this is one signal that might be changing pulse at a different time, right? Because you can control it. That's where the modulations come in. You're not going to have a PWM without a controlling component because PWM is basically a technique used to encode a message into a pulsing signal, a signal that is changing on and off. Now, here, if we go from 80% duty circle to, let's say, 100%, as you can see here, I'm changing the duty circle of this signal here now when i go to a hundred percent duty circle obviously these no longer qualify as a pwm because now here you are still able to read 490 hertz frequency but in reality the frequency now change is now non-existent because the signal is now constant it's no longer pulsing it's no longer changing it's now a constant hundred percent signal you have to have a changing signal in order for it to be qualified as a PWM signal. Right. Now, as a demonstration, this PWM signal right here, as you can see, it's got a period of 2 milliseconds. Now, remember, frequency is 1 divided by the period. That's what's giving us that 490 hertz frequency because we got a period of 2 milliseconds. Now, this is a duty cycle, as you can see now, of 45%. Now, as soon as we increase this duty cycle to 100%, you're going to see that the positive width is now going to be equal to the period. Now, if the positive width there become equal to the 2 millisecond period, then you no longer have a changing signal. The frequency component is going to disappear. You're just going to have a constant signal. Look at it. Now, as soon as we reach the 100% duty circle, the oscilloscope is no longer able to measure the frequency because it's non-existent. Because we now only have a constant signal. It's no longer a PWM signal. Now that everybody is on the same page, let's now go ahead and discuss our very first method to generate a PWM signal. Now, before we can dive into this first method, if you found this tutorial useful so far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Syntech channel. That would be highly appreciated. Thank you so very much. Now, the first of our four methods is the simple analog write method. Now, this is the key function that we are making use here analog write to generate the pwm signal that i've got right here in this board now 
let's go into this sketch here line by line because that's what is loaded into my Arduino board here. Now the first line, obviously I'm just using the uh, LCD liquid crystal library to basically uh, make use of that LCD display. Now line number four, I've got my PWM chosen to pin nine. Now this is an interesting add-on as I've said earlier. Now with this add-on you can do quite a number of things here you can do current measurements and voltage measurement this board can basically turn into a multimeter because you can measure the voltage and the current as well now if you are interested in this add-on please let me know in the comment section and i can make an arrangement for you obviously there will be a cost attached to it now this is my pin 9 as you can see from the arduino pin 9. now make sure that the pin that you select have a hardware implementation of a PWM signal like pin 9 here as you can see on the Arduino board uh, every pin that's got a PWM signal implementation you're going to see a small mark on it so that's 11, 10, 9 you got 6, 5 and 3 all those pins they got hardware implementation of a PWM now if you use a pin that does not support PWM signal, obviously the analog right here is not going to work. If you want to make it work, you have to use different methods. That's going to involve a lot of coding. Now we go into LAN 5. So I'm initializing a variable for my duty circle. And line 6 here, I've got the pin for my duty circle control potentiometer that is on A2. So A2 is somewhere here on my analog pin. It is rooted onto this add-on board here. Then we move on into the setup function. Obviously we initialize the LCD display because we want to display things in there. Then we set our pin mode, which is this pin here. This pin here, this is eight and this is nine. Now right now I'm on the picture here, it is connected on pin 11. But right now on the board itself, it's connected on pin 9. So we have to set that pin as an output. Now we move on to the loop here. Now on the loop, obviously, now we have to initialize the reading of the port. So we are reading the port. The value that we read from the port is going to be ranging from 0 to 1023. Now because the analog write function is expecting here a value of integer of 8 bits, Okay, so that means we need to map these to 0 to 255 for it to work well. Now the next line, line 19, where we're calling the analog write function. This is where it is hard-coded with a 490 hertz frequency. Okay, and then we're controlling the duty circle with the duty variable here. Now from 20 to down here is basically just me uh, displaying whatever you see on the screen here when we control and we are getting now if you remove everything down here it's still going to work really obvious it's going to work the only line of code you need here is basically analog right so that basically mean your pwm pin must be set up and the duty circle reading from your potentiometer is set up so you can complete this code with basically just a few lines okay otherwise if you want to be a bit fancy like me here you're going to have all these other codes here now this sketch is already loaded into my arduino board i'm going to just go ahead and load it one more time just to make sure that we've got the correct script running into our arduino board as you can see uploading and it's done uploading and obviously the duty circle is at 81 percent now we already dive into this signal uh, earlier on now just to demonstrate quickly here as you can see so the pwm uh, is at 490 hertz frequency as you can see on the oscilloscope my duty circle is sitting at about 20 percent right so that is 20 percent of what of two milliseconds which is the period of this pwm signal now as i control my duty circle you can see now sitting at about what 58 50 52 percent duty circle you can see i've got a period of like the positive width is like 1.06 milliseconds changing so it's basically half of the two milliseconds so it gives me 50 percent duty circle so like i said earlier if i go all the way to 100 percent duty circle 
you're going to see the period and the width becoming equal and at that time you no longer be going to be able to measure the frequency of the signal because it's no longer qualified as a pwm signal it's now a constant signal so that is it guys from for this first 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 method now stay tuned so that we can now look into the second and third and fourth methods of how to generate a pwm signal using the arduino board now in this tutorial we've covered quite a bit of theory uh, about the pwm signal what actually is a pwm signal so it took us a couple of minutes to explain that now we've also done with our very first method on how to generate a pwm signal basically with a simple analog right so to keep this tutorial optimum i'm going to uh, stop it here before it gets too long so watch out for part two where we're going to talk about the second third and the fourth methods and we're going to squeeze that into a one part to basically complete this with two tutorial so if you find it useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel stay tuned for more upcoming tutorial until next time cheers